Sound like she's running okay? I don't know. It does sound a little quiet. It hasn't ran in a long time. Just wanted to crank her up and make sure she's still working. Welcome back to another video, folks. We are in front of the camp house. Built this thing, if you guys missed it, we built this house in the middle of the woods and it was like a massive group project. A bunch of people stopped by and helped, but it was obviously me, Andrew, Ryan, and Daryl were the main people that built this thing. <laughs> Woo! Stand this wall up. One, two, three. Uh, let's pull it back a little bit. I feel like a roofer. Can I say that? Push, don't push, don't push. Go ahead, push again. We're about to make a freaking house. Come on. Hold on, I'm hitting this other piece right here. Yeah, I gotta jack it up a little bit. Might have to be a bit more off. The inside's still in pretty good shape. Yeah, TV's still here. <laughs> Nobody stole the TV. I think we also did a really good job of sealing it super tight because I don't see like a lot of cobwebs or like bugs. You know, look, look at the rafters, like there's nothing on them. It doesn't appear like the bugs have moved in or anything. Now we originally built this house and called it Norm's house, but I have a feeling that he's never gonna come here and spend the night, so we're gonna have to do it. And let's be honest, we built this for ourselves. Right, this yeah. was for our enjoyment throughout the hunting season and the camping season anyways. Once the build was done, we actually came back and renovated them. We added things like lights, external lights, internal lights. We put the American flag up for God's sakes. We electrified it via that generator on the side of the building. So now we have all the amenities that we need for a camping excursion like this. Over the next 24 hours, we are gonna do several things. We are going to camp in the camp house. We are going to go hunting several times in this video. For what? I don't even know. There's a rumor that neighbor Daryl is cooking supper tonight and breakfast tomorrow morning, Ooh, Andrew. I'm excited. And when you get two meals from neighbor Daryl, like consecutively, it's an experience. We got a lot going on in today's video, folks. It's gonna be a 24 hour challenge, basically. We're gonna be hunting, camping, all that good stuff, like I said. First things first, we do need a couple things. So we're gonna have to head to Walmart. Smash that thumbs up button if you guys like this type of content. I know you do. Let's get some supplies. Do they actually have a couple like decent hunting guns here. Yeah, they really do. Do you see that one right there? Guys, I've been thinking about doing like some type of a gun challenge, hunting challenge here at Walmart. We do stuff like that in the fishing world. So if you guys want to see something like that, smash that thumbs up button. If we get 10,000 likes on this video, we will come back to Walmart and we will build some type of a gun setup and then go hunting with it and actually use it. They got the shotgun selection is actually decent. Like that, that shotgun right there, that camo one, there's some sick, sick guns. It's the first time I've looked at the guns at the Walmart here where I live. It's actually not a bad selection at all. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. Got a bunch of stuff in the camp house already. We've got some air mattresses. We have some like bedding stuff. So we have some stuff. Here's the thing, dude. You are going to need a sleeping bag. Yeah, for sure. It's going to get cold tonight. It's going to get down to the 30s. I know most of you people in the Midwest and up north are laughing at us, but to us, when it gets in the 30s, that's pretty cold. That's the one I have. I got that 20 degree Montauk. That Coleman yeah. <laughs> Montauk. I like these because they're the big and tall. So they're like oversized. You know yeah, what I mean? they're nice. But I'm not going to tell you what to do. I mean, Lumberjack right here. What <laughs> I was just deal? about to say, if you want to get one of these little cricket kids, that's that's your prerogative. I'm not going to tell another man how to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to get you a Coleman, dude. I'm going to treat you to the big dog. The big and tall, man. Sounds good. If you guys need a camping hat, get a big and tall sleeping bag. It just makes it oversized so it acts as like a huge and encompassing, you know, snuggly thing. I mean, I can't explain it. You just gotta try it. Now for food, we think we're taken care of. I think Daryl's gonna make a couple things, but wouldn't it be interesting as if we got one of these bad boys right here, right? This is a little pre-prepared. You, know, you pour hot water in there, you let it cook. It's like a survival meal. Notice what it is, lasagna, right? It's rumored that Daryl's gonna make his famous Mexican lasagna out of wild game meat and bring it tonight. Maybe we could make this as well and compare it to Daryl's design. We're gonna have a little 1v1 uh, taste testing here tonight. I think Daryl's probably gonna win, but I'm really interested to try some of that survival food because I really haven't had either one of those. One of the things you gotta do when you're camping, I mean, it's just a must, is s'mores. I'm sure you guys would agree, you know, having an actual fire and making s'mores. Now, what I've never done, these, these may look like a normal bag of marshmallows right here. Check this out, <laughs> chocolate stuffed. Don't need the chocolate, it's just, it's in there. You think this is gonna be good though, honestly? I'm willing to try it. Because sometimes companies will go too far with like the mixing and trying to make things convenient and they'll mess something up. I'm interested to see this. All right, I think we've got enough stuff here, at least enough stuff to survive for 24 hours in this camp house and have a good time doing it. Let's get back to the camp house and set everything up because we've got a hunt to go to this afternoon. Got to get all camoed up, figure out the wind, where we're going to go, where we're going to sit. See you guys there. We throw in like seven different clips through the same thing. Yeah. They're synchronizing exactly like different 
dude, all the years that we edited multiple layers and didn't have that. Like you had to literally sit there and take the time to, to make everything match up. And sometimes you'd lose your spot later on in the video, so you'd have to come and redo it again and again and again. Dude. What the hell are you even talking about? That's not true. You're a liar. Oh! What? What is that? Oh, there was water. Oh, there's water in the bag. I'm an idiot. Bro, all over your bed, dude. Freaking party foul, man. Leave it to me. Dude, my love for the camp house is starting to be reignited right now. Yeah. Let's see how she feels. Oh. Bro. Sleep good, bro. Dude, go sleep better than I do at home, bro. Yeah, the TV's so big, it's gonna be hard to see, but you know. Now we just gotta shoot something tonight, buddy. Yup. You big Rocky fan, oh, Andrew? Oh, dude, yeah. I don't want to brag, but we will be watching Rocky tonight after our, our hunting adventure. Look at this, guys. We got a TV in the woods, and it's working right now. Last time we showed it to you guys, the TV was not working. That's sick. Best camp house ever, in so my opinion. Sick. Hey, man. What's going on? Man, we got the TV hooked up. We figured out the internet. Away from home. I see you brought your unicorn sleeping bag with you. Yeah, well, you know, for uh, for Lily, the day one of the days she's gonna sleep out here, we gotta have something for her too. I tried to get Andrew to stay in it, but he was like, "Ah, eh, hey, yeah, man, I said I wasn't against it." Right, right. that's right. It's how cold it is. That's exactly right. Yeah, we getting real cold. You and him both being there. All right, folks, it's hunting time. We've got about two and a half hours from right now of daylight, of shootable light. We were thinking about heading to a place called The Hammer. Now this is a big box stand, one of those eight by eight stands. Me and Andrew are gonna go sit together. The reason why we're hunting The Hammer tonight is because I found a gigantic scrape in the corner of The Hammer, and I believe it was done by a mature buck recently. I'm not sure what we're looking for tonight. I mean, obviously we want that big trophy buck. I still have not shot my first big buck of the year. I would love to do that. The rut is any day now, so we could see one tonight. I'd also shoot a doe for a catch clean cook with neighbor Daryl, or, you know, bobcat coyotes are always in the area. This is kind of a general hunt. Just gonna see what's out there, see what we can see. Let's go hunting, boys. Here's our view, our view right here. And that big scrape was all the way in the back corner right there. So hopefully whoever made that scrape will show himself tonight. I want to see some antlers tonight, brother. I need to see them. I need to see some. It's worth noting that we did have a trail cam on one of these side alleys. And we have seen big bucks here just kind of strutting around. One thing I know for sure, when it's turkey season, man, there are a lot of turkeys out here. Holy moly. Look at all the heads just sticking up. <laughs> hey, well, I love seeing any animal movement this early in the evening. I like that. That is a good sign. Boys and girls, we just made it back to the camp house, and uh, obviously nothing. No deer, didn't see anything. Not even a doe, which is the part that's craziest to me. I don't know. Temperature's starting to drop. It is cold. Luckily for us, neighbor Daryl is our friend. A little My Buddy heater attached to a propane tank over there in the Kona, and we're just gonna let it kind of fill up the old camp house. In the meantime, neighbor Daryl should be on his way with some supper really soon. It's like a wild game Mexican lasagna. Cannot wait for that. Let's get a little campfire going. Woo, that's hot. That's really Gosh. hot. I was about to say, I'm like further away from you. Woo. So you said you have had these or you have never had the mountain house. No. So apparently it's just hot water in that. So I'm gonna kind of toss this right next to the coals. That's gonna get hot quick. You need it boiling? Ah? Uh, yeah, boiling water. Yeah. And do you pour it in the bag? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You seal it back up after you put the water in there. 
Wait five minutes, I think. Daryl just texted me and he said the food is almost ready. The taste test, the official taste off. It's coming. So that kind of looks weird. Not, you know, I mean, it's freeze dried food, so I guess it's kind of just the deal. All right. Wow, that's really hot. Woo, yeah, that's plenty hot, I think. Yeah. That doesn't need all this water. I'm just going to kind of submerge it. That should be good, I think. A little bit more of this scalding water. Wow, yeah, look at that steam coming out. Dude, it smells, oh, wow. smells really yeah, good, man, by the way. Good. All right, resealed. Gonna give her five minutes. Daryl's food should be here momentarily. I cannot wait, dude. I'm getting freaking hungry. Same, dude. All this failing at hunting is just getting me really hungry, Daryl. I got this MRE in here too. I want you to check it out. It actually, looks really good. Got the good magic box. Well, that's the magic box. Get some of that stuff out. We got all these. Oh, that's some brownies here. I can't eat. <laughs> yes. Here's your coffee. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, man. Oh, with some oh, homemade guacamole man. on top. Homemade guac on top? Yeah. Oh, my lord. Man, we really got to build a table, man. We are slacking we right are now. We are slacking, dude. Jesus, look at that. I can't wait. Yeah. Put cupcakes in here, though? I know you're a big corner guy like myself. Oh, so yeah. It's, it's the best piece. It's going to be a little messy, but lasagna is just kind of a messy food, you know? The last one he made was amazing. <laughs> Just as good. I'm sure it is. If not better. Nowadays, I can't even keep track of when the last time Daryl blew my mind with food was. But right now, I can keep track. It was it's right now. The guac edition, huge. I think he's got different kinds of meat in here. Yeah, like multiple different kinds. There's definitely some poultry. This yeah. might this might be like game bird, like dove or something. Present, but also is like dark meat. You know, like venison or something. I think. Check out the final product there. Yeah. That don't it's look bad. Me and Andrew were talking about how it actually smells pretty dang yeah, decent. Yeah, it looks yeah. like MREs. Yeah, it does. It's got the same kind of look and feel to it. Man. You know what? It's not terrible. Yeah. I mean, like we said, if you're on a mountain and you're camping, or you're, hunting, you're elk hunting or something, oh, yeah. this is all you got. I mean, geez. You should try this first and then try Daryl's design. That's what you should do. All right. Yeah, yeah I mean, it really ain't bad at all. I've had some MREs, we used to yeah. them all the time. It's not, it's not bad. bad. No. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's not bad. No, it's definitely not the best. No, it's not bad at all. You go for it. Yeah. I should have eaten that first and then the good one. Yeah, I'm sure compared to Daryl, it's <laughs> trash. It's not bad, though. Mm -mm. It's not bad for what it you is. You know it tastes like? Boy. Beef roni again. It does, exactly. Yeah. Chef Boyardee, yeah, beef roni. Yeah. Exactly yep. what it tastes like. If you had told me what it was, I would have never. If that's all you had, man, you'd be glad to have it. Now try that. Wow, Andrew. All right, let's give it a shot. It's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot different than the last one. This is turkey and pheasant. Turkey and pheasant, okay. Well, that's a pheasant we killed last year. Oh, nice. Isn't it amazing? Yeah, good. I mean, okay, so turkey and pheasant, so like... I was just to... talking about today, I don't like turkey. We were talking about that that's earlier That's great. Today. It's that wild turkey. As a matter of fact, the chewy pieces you get is that wild turkey. He's two years this old. This is what it's all about right here, boys. Oh, yeah. Dinner in the camp house. I didn't get it all. I'm gonna have to try it. I've ate a lot of things I wouldn't make in lasagna. I've never made it. Well, we've eaten some delicious Daryl cuisine, Andrew, and I mean, he already brought the dessert, so we really don't even need to do this. No, but no. we have to figure out this chocolate stuffed marshmallow situation. Cracker up here. Got my roasting instrument. I mean, it looks pretty typical, I gotta be honest with you. So. All right. The texture's everything. Oh, man, it's uh. Dang. It's charring. It just, oh, yeah, oh. there we go. Okay, okay. Yeah, there's a... What was that? I put my knee on a coal. That was really hot. <laughs> that got a little away from me there, buddy. I'm sorry about that. <gasps> so now you just... Well, blam. All right. You think the chocolate got melted? Uh, it feels pretty hard in the middle yeah, still. I didn't think it did. <laughs> yeah. The chocolate is still... <laughs> Incredibly hard, and the marshmallow is like chewy. How how did that even happen? How could the marshmallow be chewy, like as if it was undercooked, but the chocolate not be melted? I hate to say it, man, but you have to. You got to get in there. I'll do it. Talk us through it. Oh yeah, no, that chocolate ain't it. No, that does not melt very well. That's not gonna work. The stuffed puffs, that ain't it. As you go in for another bite. Well, man, like I said, the flavor was okay. The textures, yeah, is where it struggled. But hey. The cuisine was A plus. This is more like a 
D minus. Mike likes it. Ooh, ooh. I do. It's cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, All right, folks, we just got back to uh, camp. God, nothing again. It's an evening and a morning in a row, two sits in a row with nothing, which is kind of uncommon out here to go that many sits without seeing anything. It's freaking weird. I mean, we're, we're talking to Daryl the whole time. He's got buddies that hunt around here, and he was talking to them, and uh, they said they only saw like a spike this morning, one deer. Crazy. No bobcats, no coyotes, which I've been seeing a lot of, no nothing. So at this point in the game, I think there's only one thing to do, and that's uh, get the fire roaring again in the back, which is what Andrew's working on right now. Get a little fresh cup of joe brewing fireside and strategize what to do next while we wait for uh, neighbor Daryl to deliver us some nice breakfast to fill our tummies with something other than disappointment. You ready? I think so, man. It's percolating, percolating. Those tacks are hot. Are right, you ready, man? Yeah, I want to see this. This is this is fresh. It's a percolated coffee right there, oh, man. Oh, foamed up the camera real Whoa. good. That's the freshest cup of coffee you're gonna get right there. Got uh, some of the breakfast over here warming up too on the fire. That sausage. Yes, right here. Yeah, that's work of art. Say, Darryl, tell us, show us the yes. good stuff here. It is a French toast casserole, and it's American. Red, oh. white, and blue. Oh my lord. That's the most American thing I've ever seen for breakfast right there. There you go. I can't wait to tear it into that, man, Me with either. the coffee. How's the coffee? I haven't tried it yet. Let's give it a shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's hot. It's good, though. It's good. Everything is better in the woods. Yeah. I remember that from last year. The only thing that ain't better in the woods is taking a shit. I do like taking shit out. I'd have to agree with you on that one. That is the one thing that you'd rather not do outside. Yeah, right. All right, we got to dig in here, man. We got to see some of the texture. And the only way to do that is to slice in. You know, I'm a corner guy, uh, just like you are. Yeah, that's, that's it. Right that bowl. don't look sure, bad. Oh. Man, this, there's nothing. I can nothing. smell it, though. You smell it? Oh, oh. yeah. It smells like um, IHOP. When you walk into IHOP, that's what IHOP smells like. Oh, I still haven't even really tasted the coffee yet because it's so hot. It's good, man. Look at that texture right there. I mean, look at that. It's like a dessert for breakfast. And it actually has got natural maple. I use that natural Vermont maple syrup. I didn't no. use it. It's not that sugar syrup. That's good God, syrup. man. Oh. Goodbye, camp house. Been real, been really freaking awesome. At least the camping aspect of this video is going really well. We're leaving camp for now, but this video is not over by a long shot. We just finished our little breakfast with neighbor Daryl. He's taking off, doing some other stuff around the property. Me and Andrew are about to head down to another part of the property, do a little bit of baiting, checking some scrapes, check some trail cams, and I'm probably gonna end up extending this little 24 hour challenge to a 36 hour challenge because we can't just end this thing without seeing anything in the way of like deer, coyotes, something. Me and Andrew are back here in the woods and we found what we think is the first rub of the season, but we're really not sure here. So maybe you guys can weigh in. I mean, I know on, on the surface, it looks like it. There's a couple factors that made us think that it wasn't. There's not a lot of shavings on the ground from the tree. And there's also not another rub anywhere near this one from what we understood 
if there's one, there's normally gonna be more than one very close to it. But if this is a rub, that's good because this is scrape alley. And we have a ground blind right there. So once the rut actually kicks off here, which I mean, we're just counting down the days. Everybody else in the world's already enjoyed their rut except for us. This bad boy, this is gonna be ready. We're already, we've already started filming a video with this ground blind with a crossbow, hoping that a big deer is gonna come through here one of these days. You guys will be seeing that video very soon. So basically what we've decided, folks, is we're gonna split up this evening. We're not gonna give up on this video yet. Andrew's gonna be in the, the saddle. That's right. And we got you kind of stationed down there in Buck Ridge on the very far side of the property, the very yep. back. We walked through there, we saw a bunch of scrapes Fine, earlier. Sorry. As far as spots go, that's probably gonna be a good spot. I'm gonna sit back at the hammer tonight because that's where we sat yesterday evening. Yep. And then neighbor Daryl is gonna be sitting in big money. Now, I don't think he's gonna have a rifle, but he's just gonna be kind of reporting what he sees. We, we've been seeing a big buck on camera at big money. So we'll see if maybe Daryl sees him this evening. So we've got three different dudes, three different locations on the property. Somebody should see something. Somebody's gotta see something. All right, bro. Good luck, dude. Appreciate you. Yep. Let's do this. That was loud. Good Guys, I'm literally looking at deer that were walking around on one of our food plots earlier today in the middle of the day. I'm telling you guys, the rut is going to be here any day. This is great right there. It's down the path that I'm going to be hunting on, so that's a good sign. Guys, you want to talk about frustration. All you deer hunters out there can relate to what I'm about to say. So I pack up all the gear, right? I just got out of the stand, obviously. Break everything down, got my bag packed up, got my rifle slung. I'm about to crawl back down the ladder to come out of the stand, right? I forget my drink. So I take another step back up in the stand, grab my bottle, and just happen to look out the window. There's a freaking deer standing there looking at me. Now it's a doe, probably like 80 yards away because she hears all the commotion in the stand, you know, because I'm getting out. This is right after legal shooting light. It's getting dark. So I couldn't show you guys on camera because, I mean, it was too dark. Plus, everything was packed up. Couldn't reassemble the long lens. <laughs> they would have ran off. I did end up pulling out my binos and looking, and it was like a family. It was four deer. Now, two of them were yearling. So two does with two yearlings. I mean, just... Pff, like, were they just sitting there the whole time just waiting to come out for dark? I'm sure that's a common thing in the hunting world, but that's super freaking frustrating if that's what actually happened. Tell me a story. You need to hunt down there, man. Really? I didn't see nothing, but I heard. Dude, yeah. No joke. That stand, I know it'd be a butthole to pull something out of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. worth it. They were down there heavy. Water. Down in that water where we were seeing yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So you could hear them just sloshing around. Oh, yeah. You know it was deer? They were blowing at me when I was climbing down. No way. Yeah. Amazing how deer just appear out of nowhere. You're staring at the same spot in the woods for an hour or two, and then all of a sudden, imagine she's looking around a little bit. I want to keep my eye on her real close because if all of a sudden she leaves, looking behind her, that could mean a buck, you know, is moving his way in. We have seen so many big bugs in this. There's actually another deer, a second deer, about 20, 30 yards back in the wood line. You can't see it on the big camera. Oh, folks, we got a big buck, I think. Oh, yes, we do. Folks, we got us a buck. Good size one. Oh my. 
to shoot him where he is right now, but it's such a tight window. I really want him to come down a little bit. <sighs> Looks like one of the eight points that I've been seeing. Still can't quite tell. Might just be a big six point, but I'm thinking it might be a trophy racked bug. Of course, he's just gonna stand right there where I don't want him to be. The problem is, I think that doe already left. Lost sight of her. Come on back down, buddy. That right there is uh, exciting and frustrating at the same time. It's the first big buck I've ever seen. I've looked at like in a position where I could shoot it. First time this season. It's frustrating though, because I feel like if Andrew was here and he was operating the big camera, like the long lens, you know, I may have had a chance to shoot that deer this morning. There was a moment where he got broadside in a little gap between a couple trees. And I think I could have shot him in that moment, but because I was operating the camera, and I was just watching him, you know, through binos and stuff. If I had somebody else there, I think I could have done it. But hey, that's part of the challenge of hunting. I Man, I really hate to end this video on a, uh, not a negative note, but without having killed an animal or even have a shot at one. But look, that's why they call it hunting and not killing. That's what a wise man once told me. And that makes sense. It's just like kind of, that's why it's called fishing and not catching because you're not always successful. I've also seen a lot of you guys commenting that you appreciate that about this channel is that I leave in the failed attempts too. And that's the, th look, I don't care about embarrassing myself. Like, look, I'm learning. I'm a noob when it comes to hunting. I've only been doing it for like a year or so. I'm gonna fail along the way. I'm not afraid to show those failures to you guys. But I don't consider this a failure. I think it's a huge success, all right? The camp house, massive success. It was great spending the night in there. Uh, didn't get too cold with our little heater setup that we had in there, a little propane heater. Saw my first trophy buck of the season, like in person, almost got a shot at him. I am excited right now. The rut's coming. There's gonna be big deer down soon. My first trophy buck ever. I mean, it's, it's coming. I can literally feel it. Smash that thumbs up button if you guys enjoy this video. And remember, we're gonna go to Walmart and do that whole cheapest gun thing if you guys wanna see it. But you gotta smash that thumbs up button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you guys don't miss any giveaways or anything like that. Big shout out to Andrew. Shout out to neighbor Daryl. All the people that made this video possible. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. We out.